Hi friends, Grace here. Welcome to another video. Now based on the title, I'm sure you've all figured out that this is going to be another video on Bible cosmology, the war on God's geocentric model. Now I know these videos spark two very different reactions from east to west. There are some who watch it and are blessed by it and it's made a positive difference in their lives as they are now seeing the Bible in the way they've never seen it before. Things are now making sense to them just like it did to me when I began to understand this message. And there are some who hate it with a passion. Now for those who hate this message, let me just make it clear that nobody is forcing you to watch these videos. And I'm saying this with all love and kindness in my heart because I don't think it's healthy for you because what I find happens is that people get so upset, they start writing long paragraphs and negative comments and they start saying horrible things and it's just not nice. I just wanna make it clear that if this video is not for you, if you're not interested in Bible cosmology, then don't watch the video. You know, this is YouTube. No one is forcing anybody to do anything. This is my personal channel and I have the right to share what I feel convicted about. So if this is not for you, you don't have to watch the video. But for those who do want to stay and learn, then stay tuned because I have some very interesting information for you all. Now, a common question I get asked is, if the world is flat, where is the edge? And has anyone fallen off this edge? And I believe they're being sarcastic. Nevertheless, if we read our Bibles, you will find that there is a firmament. And we have been studying about this firmament the last few days, weeks. And the firmament was designed to separate the waters from the above waters, the bottom waters, the waters below from the waters above. And this firmament acts like a solid dome. It's like a vault surrounded by waters. For example, in Amos 9, 6, it tells us, it is he that buildeth his spears in the heavens and have founded his troop on the earth. Some say vaulted dome, a troop is like a dome, a solid dome. He that calleth for the waters of the sea and poureth them out upon the face of the earth, the Lord is his name. And Job describes this firmament as a molten glass. So it's solid. So as you can see from the picture, you can't fall off the edge. Now I would like to introduce you to this map. What I find so fascinating is that this map was designed by a Seventh-day Adventist named Alex Gleason, and it's a popular, well-respected map. And he also wrote the book called, Is the Bible from Heaven? Is the Earth a Globe? Which you may want to check out. Nevertheless, he produced this flap which is recognized as being scientifically proven. Now note the following. When we look at a Gleason's map from 1892, that states at the top that it's scientifically and practically correct as is. We see this Antarctic ice rim the Gleason's map is basically an azimuthal equidistant projection, which can be traced back to the year 1000. The AE map is also an official map of the United States Geological Survey, the USGS, and the official logo for the United Nations. The oldest known globe in the world is from 1492. This is something you need to keep in mind because many people argue that the azimuthal equidistant map is just a flattened out version of the globe when in fact the globe is just a rounded version of this true world flat map. If the flat map came first and it has the ability to convert into a globe without any problems whatsoever, then that should tell you a little bit about how this globe deception was achieved. Now, back to if there is an edge or not. 
There is no proof that there is an edge past the Antarctic ice wall, but it is speculated by many that perhaps the plane that we live on is either extremely expansive or it's possibly endless. In these two scenarios, it would be logically assumed that more land is being hidden from the general public. In a 1954 interview with Admiral Richard E. Byrd, an American naval officer who specialized in exploration, he had this to say. But strangely enough, there is left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being. And that's beyond the pole on the other side of the South Pole from middle America. And it's, uh, I think it's quite astonishing that there should be an area as big as that unexplored. Now, isn't that interesting? I find that very fascinating. That is, when you fly sail far enough, you are confronted with this gigantic, amazing ice wall. Now, note the following timeline and history where the men began to explore this ice wall. And in 1946, we have Operation High Jump where an expedition to Antarctica was led by Admiral Richard E. Byrd. They say they went to Antarctica to train, test equipment, and test the possibilities of establishing and maintaining military research bases. They claim to have charted the Antarctic coastline during this time. Who knows what else they found? Fast forward a little bit. 1955, Operation Deep Freeze. This is just an expansion of high jump where more research bases are added to Antarctica. Fast forward a little more, 1958. NASA is established, followed by the proposal of the Antarctic Treaty in 1959 and the implementation of it in 1961. The treaty basically puts Antarctica off limits to civilians with the exception of guided tours that are carefully supervised. In 1962, Operation Fishbowl takes place. Now this is where people start thinking that they found the firmament or dome during Operation High Jump or Operation Deep Freeze because for some reason, they started firing nuclear missiles straight up as if trying to mess with the firmament somehow. And not to mention the name of the project, Fishbowl, easily symbolic for the enclosed nature of our world. So, it was immediately after World War II, the US Navy launched the largest military operation ever down to Antarctica. This operation was called Operation High Jump, which lasts between 1946 to 1947. And then there was another operation called Operation Deep Freeze, which was from 1955 to 1956. And as you saw from the clip just played, it was a man called Admiral Byrd, who was a 33 degree Freemason. That's a fact, you can check out all the history records. He was a Mason and he led the expedition of a large fleet of ships, military soldiers to Antarctica. And this mission was to last six to eight months. And within that time, note what happened. In 1946, Bird oversaw Operation High Jump, the largest Antarctic expedition to date. The massive military convoy included 13 ships, 33 aircraft, and 4,700 troops. The US Navy sent down a flotilla of ships under command of Admiral Byrd, and they came back after about nine months in Antarctica. Apparently, they actually fought a battle in Antarctica probably between uh, remnants of the Third Reich and perhaps extraterrestrials as well. There were stories of craft coming up out of the water and attacking them. Flying saucers dealt a very heavy defeat to Bird's Operation High Jump. 
He gave a report in March of 1947 that said a new enemy had been discovered that could fly from pole to pole in an instant. So note that they reported to have seen UFOs. However, many believe that that was just a public relations cover up as many believe what they found was the electromagnetic field above the ice wall and they came to the edge of the dome. Now, why do people think that? I'll talk about that in a moment. However, you need to pay attention to a sequence of events that happened after this expedition to Antarctica. So, it was in 1946 to 1947, we had Operation High Jump. Interesting name, Operation High Jump, i.e. to jump that ice wall. And that was from 1946 to 1947. Then they had Operation Deep Freeze. Interesting names, which was from 1955 to 1956. And interestingly enough, Admiral Byrd dies in 1957, just one year after, less than one year, which is super fascinating. And then in 1958, NASA is formed. And then after NASA, there was the Antarctica Treaty that was signed by leading countries in 1961. It was open for signature in 1959, but it was signed in 1961. And this treaty does not allow anybody to freely explore Antarctica. Yes, you can go on chaperoned tours, but you cannot freely visit Antarctica. And there's a video where an individual goes into this in great detail. I'll post a link below if you don't believe me. But there's so much craziness surrounding this. And this treaty, which was established in 1961, is still in effect today. And it's key countries, countries who you think are at war, that are in this treaty. It's solid. No one has broken it. And it's like, why? What are they trying to preserve? What are they trying to hide? So there's a lot of conspiracy surrounding this. Is that why can you not freely explore Antarctica? Nevertheless, after they barricaded and blocked off Antarctica, something very interesting happens because after they signed the agreement in 1962, the US and the Russian military began to fire over 49 high altitude thermonuclear rockets up to the sky. And guess what they called this operation? Operation Fishbowl. Interesting, Operation Fishbowl and Operation Dominic. Now this operation, Operation Dominic, was one of the largest nuclear weapon testing, so to speak, in history. And if you look at the history, the old footage, it looks like they are hitting something. All right, now here's a headline you just don't see every day. Nuclear blast tonight may be dazzling. Good view likely. Almost 50 years ago, from a small island in the Pacific, the U.S. government conducted a test, it was one of a series, to find out what would happen if you explode a hydrogen bomb above the Earth's atmosphere in outer space. It was the height of the Cold War. And in early July 1962, this Thor rocket carried a bomb a thousand times more powerful than the bomb that hit Hiroshima up into the sky, 250 miles up. Other rockets then followed to monitor what was about to happen. And then there was an enormous white flash. Here's a view from another camera. The sky flashes red and green as particles from the bomb drop back into our atmosphere. Green is what happens when radiation collides with oxygen atoms high up in the ozone layer. And blue is when particles strike nitrogen atoms in the thicker air. So here's another view, this one from the ground. This is not a sunset. This is, maybe, the greatest man-made light show that we never want to see again. Now, many believe they were trying to break through the dome, the firmament. And every time they flew these rockets, it's like it was hitting something and it was just breaking into pieces and coming back down. Now, these rockets went haywire and many had to be aborted as they tried to blast through the dome, many believe. But nevertheless, you can just look at the sequence of events and something strange was happening 
and then they focused their attention to NASA. And now there's all this talk about going to the moon, exploring outer space. They're really pushing this heliocentric model and so on and so on, which we know is a load of garbage, especially the moon landings. Nevertheless, many believe they are hiding something, you know, and the goal, what they are really trying to do is break through the firmament. This has been their goal. However, they don't call it the firmament. They call it the Van Allen Belt, which is really the code name for the firmament. But what I want to understand, friends, that this is Nimrod all over again. You know, when Nimrod tried to build his towers to reach the heavens, they don't realize that sin is contained to the earth and God has given us this earth, not the heavens. But this is a secret war against God and his creation. And this is something that we need to realize. Like the level of deception in this world is crazy. Because, you know, in the times of Christ, Elijah, you kind of knew what you were dealing with. It was open rebellion. But now everything is so covered, like... That's why Christ says, let no man deceive you. The whole world wonder after the beast. Like this deception is crazy. And now they're talking about UFOs that need to be exposed and they go into Mars to find aliens. So there's something crazy going on. And what's the purpose? It's to prepare for the grand deception. That's what it's about. Remember, the demons are going to soon start revealing themselves and doing amazing miracles. And we need to be aware. And that's why I think understanding this model is so important. So you are not deceived because there are many people out there who just don't know, you know. But when people wake up and realize that this is a whole deception, they go on fire. And this is why I think it's so important to just get this message out there because we're at the end you know and we need to remember that not many people make it you know only a remnant has always been the case and most of the time God's professed people end up rejecting the message that God sent to them I mean many of us are aware of the Sabbath we'll talk about the Sabbath but how can you truly preach the Sabbath if you have a wrong view of creation you subscribe to the sun worship the Babel creation especially in this time when light is shining. You know, so there's something strange, something funny going on. And we really need to be praying and asking God. And I include myself here to help us. We need to be on our knees daily because what we have ahead of us, friends, pen cannot even put it to paper. (laughs) 